Psycho is more than just, you know, playing on a drum. It allows me to connect to my Japanese American culture. That's one way that I do it. Kaiko, as it is played today in ensemble form referred to as Kumidaiko, was developed by the Japanese jazz drummer Daihachi Oguchi in the 1950s. In the late 1960s, Kumidaiko was first brought to the United States with the formation of the San Francisco Taiko Dojo. The formation of many community groups followed, including those intended to make Taiko a Japanese American art form. It was not until 1990 that the first collegiate North American Taiko group was formed in UCLA, Los Angeles. Since then, many intercollegiate Taiko groups have rapidly formed, including the Claremont College of Psycho Taiko in 2003. This is my group. The great thing about Taiko is that whatever level you're at, you're able to connect with what you're playing on that level. Unlike a lot of Western style playing, it incorporates your whole body. So it's not just your mind that's engaged, but it's your entire body too. And in a sense, I would say also your spirit as well. Because you know, in Taiko you get to Kiai, which is a yaw from the soul. So as you are playing, you are moved to yell something, you know, as, as you're playing as sort of uh, an expression of what you're playing, whether it be joy, anger, frustration, you know. In the sixth grade, Stanford Taiko, the Stanford Taiko group, came to um, our middle school when they still had like assemblies and stuff. And then they were supposed to perform, and they like started for like 20 seconds when the fire alarm went off. But then they went outside and like played along with the fire alarm, and I thought that was like one of the coolest things ever. Our group history began, what was it, 2003, when a person who had been playing taiko in the past sort of came and wanted to start a taiko group on campus. So originally it was made up of uh, the cross country team and track team. And then as they grew, they sort of had more members, but you know, they played on buckets and one drum. And when the guy left, we just sort of had one drum left and a whole bunch of buckets. Then we came and we made four new drums. And um, from there it started to take it on uh, it started to become less of a club and more as a group as we went on and as uh, we gained more enthusiastic members and you know as we expanded our repertoire and our knowledge of taiko. Taiko used to be something I did just for fun. However, after my second year when I had to lead the group with another fellow member, our group reached a point where we could no longer avoid answering questions regarding the larger meaning of taiko. What exactly were we doing as a group? Were we representing Japanese culture? Did we have a responsibility to the larger Taiko community? In my senior year in college, I asked current Psycho Taiko members these questions to start thinking about the future of the group. What makes a Taiko player versus a Western style drummer? I feel like Taiko is defined by the way you play it, the way you move your body, and the way you use the drum. There's just certain movements and hits and strikes that are taiko. Are we representing our group as Japanese when we perform? It's We are representing Japanese culture in a way, even if we don't intend to. The Japanese language, kiaiing and song names, as well as costume. I think we do a pretty good job of of presenting it as something that is both Japanese but also accessible to people who aren't Japanese. You know, whether it's because we've got people of several different races and ethnicities in our group, or even if it's because we don't always, you know, sometimes we go out there in like t shirts and scrubs. What are aspects of Taiko we should respect? So, right now, I feel that 
There is a lot of tension going on within the North American Taiku community especially. While it originates in China, like the drums do, and then they were you know, moved over to Japan and then played as just Taiko in uh, religious ceremonies or or on the battlefield, so people say. It was only turned into a kumi daiko, an ensemble uh, performance type thing uh, by a jazz drummer. But that was done in Japan, and then it was moved over to the US. So, and it's been evolving differently here than in Japan, and for whatever reason, maybe because it has those roots in East Asia, that um, a lot of groups feel the need to replicate uh, you know, the Japanese ideal of kumidaiko, uh, which, which is like a very specific form. Uh, at least like their most famous group, Kodo, plays in a very specific way that a lot of groups in North America try to emulate. Um, however, a lot of groups, I think, play sloppily, uh, just because we don't, we don't really know like what ideal we should be striving for, if we should be trying to play up like to a Japanese ideal or to our own and like evolve Taiko in a different way. It only just recently clicked for me because I was part of um, another group called Culture Shock and what they were trying to do was they were trying to bring ethnic music into the Claremont Colleges and I was all excited and gung-ho about that. But then when I heard them start singing I realized that they didn't understand what they were singing. To them it was just like singing something on the radio. They didn't understand the history, um, the culture, the sort of emotions that were playing through that song and in that moment it sort of clicked. That's what Danny was talking about, you know, that's what we should have been doing for Taiko all along. Do we have a duty to the North American Taiko community to perform Taiko a certain way and up to a certain standard? I think the fact that we're clearly not a professional group, and I mean visually and in terms of our performances, obviously not a prof don't appear to be a professional group, um, says a lot to audiences about like how authentic and maybe how tied to the, the culture of origin our performances are. I think. I would hope that audiences don't look at us and say, you know, this is exactly what like quote unquote authentic Tycho is. I don't think they see that because I think we present ourselves too much as as students and as, you know, college students who are who are trying this thing, who have come to this thing rather late in life. Because we are a collegiate Tycho group, is it it's not like a Japanese community like Taika group. So like just giving giving the audience a general picture of what we're doing in the background of that. I would prefer someone who plays sloppily but plays with so much heart and soul versus someone who plays precisely and correctly but they're so cold in their playing. Because anyone can play precisely with enough training but not anyone could, not everyone can play with heart and soul because that's not something that can be taught. That's something that just has to be felt. I still don't know the answers to my questions, but I think it's important for the group to keep these questions in mind as they become a larger presence in the North American Taiko community.